Hi everyone, today I thought I'd do a little product review for you and today we're going to look at the Liquitex paint marker. So this is a marker pen but it's actually filled with acrylic paint um, and it's something I've just started using quite recently. Uh, I bought this one from WH Smiths in the UK and it cost me around about £15. So it isn't the cheapest of materials but to my mind it's well worth it. So. Let me just give you a close up of the nib you've got here. So you've got a nib which is around about 15 millimeters wide and then it's about eight millimeters wide end on and then it's got a rounded shape. OK, so if I prime the pen by pressing the nib into the page and then go across, you can see that I get a pretty solid line of paint, although you do have to be careful because if you do it too much, the paint will drip. If I go edge on, then I get a line which is around about four or five millimetres thick. But you can use the very edge of the narrow face of the nib to give you a more precise line. And that's one of my favourites to use. But what's really cool about this pen is that if you apply the nib very lightly over the page, you can see you get a mark which is very similar to using normal acrylic paint with a dry brush technique. This very textured and very sort of characterful mark you can make here. Similarly, you can drag the nib along edge on and as the paint runs out, you get a similar effect again. And then a little tip is that if you've been using the paint, if you've been using the pen held this way repeatedly, the paint will tend to flow to the bottom of the nib. And you can use that to your advantage because if you then rotate the pen through 180 degrees, this uh, part of the nib won't have very much paint in it. So you get a really nice expressive dry brush mark. So, OK, that's essentially it. It's a very simple to use uh, marker pen, but it's filled with acrylic paint instead of uh, ink. So let's have a look at some of the work I've done recently, some of the work I've got on the go using this pen. So this is one of the first drawings I did using the marker pen. And this is of a sheep and lamb just looking off into the distance. And it's a very quick study, but you can see the range of marks you can get with the marker pen and how you can use them in different ways. So, for example, here along the top of the head, that line is pretty much the same line you would expect from a normal felt tip pen. But here on the lower on the legs of the lamb and here, this sort of mark indicating the grass, it's very much a mark that you would associate normally with the application of acrylic paint using the dry brush technique. So this pen is very expressive. The next example is a quick blocking out of three belted Galloway cows. Now, in this situation, I haven't really used the dry brush style of mark. I've used predominantly the pen lines to indicate some background bushes here and the outline of the cows. But what I've done is use the, the broad application of the paint to block in the dark areas of the cow. Now, of course, remember, we're putting acrylic paint straight down onto the paper. So it's a really quick way of blocking in the lights and darks and establishing a sense of form in your painting. And this is, you know, would now be perfect for painting over with different washes of acrylic or watercolour or simply just applying thicker acrylic paint over the top to take the painting to the next stage. This drawing is of a wild horse and baby foal up on Dartmoor. And I've just included this one to show you how, look, I've included some really dark areas of paint here to indicate deep shadow, and then some lighter marks to indicate the contours around the body of the foal. Dark area again on the mane, and then some more dry brush marks here on the mane of the larger horse. Some normal marker pen lines have been applied to indicate the grass. And once again, we could go over this with paint to very quickly bring it up into uh, towards a finished painting. Now, this drawing is actually one of my favourites uh, that I've done recently. This depicts a Jacob sheep. Now, the Jacob breed has uh, regions of brown wool on a background of white. And this is a particularly shaggy uh, wooled animal, complete with horns. But you can see that the Acrylic paint marker pen has allowed me to use a wide range of very expressive marks in a very fluid way. And you can see that here on the face of the animal, I've applied the dry brush technique 
in more than one direction and overlaid different layers to give me a range of different tones as we move around the animal. And for the most part, that's what I've done. There are some marker pen style lines that have been applied to define the outside of the horn and this region on the face. You know, uh, the difference between the white central band and the darker shaded region here. But again, this pen, you know, if I hadn't told you that was a marker pen drawing, I think most people would look at that and think that's been done using a dry brush. So very, very expressive, very quick to use. Now this picture is actually a work in progress, so not, not a finished piece just yet. Um, and I just wanted to show you, you know, what a wide range of subjects you can tackle. So I've had this idea that I've played with on and off over the years of a realistically painted animal, but the animal is walking through a garden or perhaps through an arrangement of fruit as if it was either a miniature animal or the plants or fruit or whatever obstacles the animal is uh, encountering are much larger than you would normally think. And this one, and the plants for this uh, painting I painted from life sat out in my back garden and the acrylic paint marker pen was really useful here to just very quickly put down some line work while I was outside and you can just about see some of the dark lines still showing through here and I used the same pen to describe the outline of the animal and what I've done since then is go over those marks which are you know completely um, completely permanent they don't wash away once they're dry which is a really good thing so I can just go over with different washes of acrylic and different colors different thicknesses of paint use those marks as a guide. I can obliterate them with more paint when I want, uh, but I found it was a really good way to work in the open air and get started quickly. Uh, now here's an example of a landscape painting that I actually painted completely from life, sat on the beach down at Sandy Bay near Exmouth in Devon. And once again, I used the acrylic paint marker pen to just put down some initial lines before I paint it over with normal acrylic paint. But the main thing I wanted to mention here was that this uh, painting is an example of the one problem I have had with the pen so far. This was a particularly hot day and because of that, uh, and because I'd left the pen out in the direct sunlight, then the, the, the paint did become very watery and very runny and so it kind of spilled everywhere a little bit. You can maybe see that on the bottom corner here. It's not a big deal, not really a fault of the product, but just something to be aware of if you are going to use these pens. But I will say that having the acrylic pen with me while I was painting in the open air, really easy, really light to carry. So it's definitely something I'm going to use again. So let's uh, finish this video by doing a quick sketch of a cow uh, using the same pen. And I'm using the, the shorter edge of the nib at the moment to begin to describe the back of the cow. Uh, it's got this rather wondrous tail which drops down near vertical to ground level and then the hind quarter quarters sweep into the left and there's kind of a distinct line here where the light is catching the hip of the animal. And the rear leg makes a nice curve. There's the belly. The front leg. And the other front leg there. So you can see I'm just very loosely and simply describing the form. Not going to go into any detail uh, with this particular demonstration. I just want to give you an idea of how efficiently and quickly these pens allow one to begin to describe or lay out a painting. Because of course, if I was working with a brush and paint, then I would have had to uh, refresh my brush on several occasions already uh, and possibly dilute the paint as well.
Okay, so we've got the beginnings of a of a cow on the page there. Just need to adjust some of these lines a little bit. Uh, and then there's a cast shadow on the grass here. So let's start to pop that in. And now I've changed the angle at which I'm applying the pen to the page. And I'm sweeping the longer edge of the nib down to give me a different type of mark to show that this shadow isn't just on a smooth flat surface, but it's actually going through grass. Um, and then again, I'll change the angle again to pop in some indication of the grass as well. Let's put a narrow line back here to act as our horizon. And then we can perhaps start to introduce some other textures. The bushiness of the end of the tail. Block in a bit of deep shadow back there and under the belly here. the front leg and most of the most of the head of the animal is actually in shadow so let's let's do that but we won't go too dark a shadow you can see how the dry brush effect you can get with these pens allows you to obtain a range of tones so it's not simply you know all black or solid color OK, so there we go. It's just a very simple start to a drawing of a cow. But remember, we've been applying acrylic paint with a marker pen. So I found these very useful in the last couple of months since I started using them. Uh, as mentioned at the start of the video, this is a Liquitex acrylic paint marker uh, and they cost around about £15 in the UK at least. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this one and found it useful. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to ask me in the comments and I'll be happy to help. Thanks for watching.